It's got a tilting frame, the engine's in the back. Um, we start it just by pedaling and de uh, de whatever the word is worth. Compressing this, I'll just give you an idea of how it goes. The 1960s saw a boom in the production and sale of British motorcycles. But it was also a time when the industry made some bizarre and disastrous decisions. That ultimately led to the downfall of several iconic brands. One of the most infamous and weird examples was the Ariel 3. Developed by parent company BSA at a reported cost and loss of a million pounds. The manufacturer itself was uncertain about the vehicle's purpose, as evidenced by the perplexing advertising slogan, Here it is, whatever it is. The blame for its failure was attributed to a management team that had little interest in motorcycles. Despite some fascinating and innovative design features, such as its ability to lean into corners like a motorcycle and having all three wheels interchangeable, the Ariel 3 was unattractive, slow, and ultimately an elaborate solution to a problem no one had. Before the war, Ducati specialized in manufacturing electronic radio equipment. However, the destruction of their factory during World War II and the need to get the nation moving again led Ducati to innovate. They created a small moped by attaching a 48cc single-cylinder four-stroke engine, designed to be bolted onto a bicycle to a frame of their own design. This moped was named Cucciolo, or Poppy, due to the snapping sound produced by its short, stubby exhaust. As the first Ducati two-wheeler, the Cucciolo holds significant historical importance, marking the origins of the modern company. Although it may not have had the style and practicality of the Vespa, the Cucciolo was successful due to its light weight of just 98 pounds, its impressive fuel economy of around 200 miles per gallon, and a top speed of approximately 40 miles per hour. Honda has never shied away from exploring weird and fascinating motorcycle designs and technology, but often these ventures have led to bizarre dead ends. Such was the fate of the DN01. Firstly, no one was sure if it was a cruiser or a very large maxi scooter, and it wasn't very convincing as either. Then, the foot forward riding position was too uncomfortable for long rides and the load capacity was too low to carry much luggage or a pillion. Transmission was by hydraulic drive, making it fully automatic, a feature not pursued on other motorcycles. Finally, it was far too expensive for what it was and the performance it offered, effectively killing it off after only two years in production. had been experimenting with the bizarre Wangle rotary engine since the 1960s, but it wasn't until 1974 that a production version emerged. The fascinating RE5 featured a single rotor rotary engine with a nominal 497cc displacement, producing 61 horsepower and 55 foot-pounds of torque. Despite being a heavy motorcycle, it handled well but was weirdly complex. 
boasting no fewer than three oil reservoirs for the sump, gearbox, and a total loss system for lubricating the rotor tips. Additionally, the throttle twist grip operated five cables. Suzuki enlisted the renowned Italian designer Giorgetto Giugiaro for the styling, resulting in a cylindrical instrument cluster with a green plastic cover, a matching tail light, and spherical turn signals. Acknowledging the likely challenges for Suzuki dealers, the warranty guaranteed a complete new engine within the first year or 12,000 miles if any problems arose. To some, the 2000 for Honda Rune was a triumph of style and aesthetics. To others, it looks bizarre, like the kind of growth you'd find on a year-old piece of cheese forgotten in the back of your fridge. Discovered only because you're wondering what smells so bad. It definitely looks organic, but not in a pleasant way. The most common reference is that it looks like a perfectly acceptable Honda Varkri F6 C1500, a genuinely nice cruiser to look at. Everything about it just seems wrong and, frankly, quite weird. The headlight looks like it was yanked off a lamppost somewhere and duct taped to the fork tree. The tail seems to be attempting to replicate a classic American cruiser look, but it sticks out way too far. Then there's the radiator, which looks like the great side of one of those things you put a hard-boiled egg in and close the lid to make egg slices for salads. Don't even get me started on the exhaust pipes. If they had kept them as a 3 to 1 per side and punched them straight back, there would be a redeeming factor. But what in the nine hells were they thinking by making it into a gigantic exhaust that resembles a fart can? that the younger generations used to put on Honda Civics, it's all just bizarrely fascinating. Yamaha first introduced its unconventional Nikon Touring motorcycle in 2018, while the 850cc triple-powered machine appeared fairly standard from the headstock back. Its front end was anything but ordinary featuring to 15-inch wheels for forks and leaning multi-wheel steering. That provided an 80% larger contact patch than a typical single wheel. Both on paper and in practice, the Nikon delivered as promised. However, its visible high-tech features, unusual appearance, and steep price deterred many riders from transitioning from traditional two-wheelers. As a result, sales have been predictably slow. Nevertheless, those who looked past the Nikon's aesthetics and experienced its front-end capabilities have become avid fans. So much so that Yamaha decided to address the shortcomings of the original model, extensively redesigning the chassis, engine, and ergonomics to create the latest Nikon, the GT, transforming it into the true sports tourer it was always meant to be. Dan Gurney, one of America's greatest four-wheel racers, now manufactures this remarkable road bike, the 140 mile an hour AAR Alligator, with its foot-forward low-seat riding position and 700cc Honda engine. For Gurney, building the Alligator is the realization of a dream. Dan Gurney achieved so much in his life that building a few dozen unique, high-end motorcycles seems like a minor footnote in his legacy. The Alligator, named for its low-slung appearance, stands out among his creations. Built by Gurney's All-American Racers, it features a modified Honda 650 engine, expanded to 710cc, and producing over 70 horsepower. The bike's extremely low seat places the engine near the rider's crotch, reminiscent of Canada's bike from Akira. Weighing just 320 pounds, the Alligator is incredibly fast, but offers a unique riding sensation due to its unconventional seating position. Gurney and AA are always added a special touch to their vehicles. The Alligator's design wasn't about being weird for its own sake, it followed the principle of form-following function. 
Gurney's height led to innovations like the gurney bubble, and lowering the seat on the alligator helped manage his higher center of gravity, resulting in a design similar to a recumbent bicycle? The Paravis Monotracer blurs the line between motorcycle and car, offering the thrill of two wheels with the comfort of four, resembling something straight out of Star Wars. This ultra-exclusive, fully enclosed motorcycle features training wheels for stability. This ultra-exclusive, fully enclosed motorcycle features training wheels for stability, accelerating from 0 to 62 miles per hour in just 4.8 seconds while achieving 65 mpg. With its unique mix of performance and luxury, the Monotracer might be the sports car or motorcycle of the future. It was even named one of Time Magazine's Best Inventions of the Year in 2008. Driving the Monotracer is similar to riding a motorcycle, just twist the throttle and go. But it has a clutch pedal instead of a lever. The Monotracer leans into corners at an impressive 50 to degrees, with ABS and traction control ensuring safety. stage a drag race between the Tomahawk and a Viper. The Tomahawk weighs much, much less. The Viper has a better contact patch, so it would be very interesting. I think the Tomahawk would come out on top in acceleration back then. Pretty sure it would. The Dodge Tomahawk is a non-street legal, crazy concept vehicle that blurs the line between car and motorcycle. Only 10 were made over four years after its debut at the 2003 North American International Auto Show. It featured an 8.3L, 500 horsepower V10 engine from the Dodge Viper and weighed 1,500 pounds. Its bizarre design and for close coupled wheels garnered significant press and industry attention. Despite not being street legal and lacking any road tests, the Tomahawk's critical reception was positive. Its top speed was never revealed, and many replicas were produced. Dodge only officially produced nine, while Neiman Marcus sold nine weird replicas at $555,000 each, all also non-street legal. Dodge labeled them as rolling sculptures to avoid legal liability for their use on public roads. If you've ever wished your suitcase could move itself through the airport, the Portland-based company Box has something fascinating for you. Their first electric scooter, which is about a meter long, looks like a weird mix between retro luggage and an oversized camera. This crazy scooter can travel up to 80 miles on a single charge, reaching a top speed of 35 miles per hour. Priced starting at just under $4,000, the high cost might deter many potential buyers. But being part of the eco-friendly elite isn't cheap. To achieve the full 80-mile range, you'll need to spend an additional $500 for a core to system, essentially an extra battery pack. While the box may look bizarre, it's intentionally designed to be non-intimidating aiming to attract a diverse range of riders, including women and seniors. This unique design hopes to make eco-friendly travel more accessible and stylish. The Megola is a German motorcycle produced between 1921 and 1925. It came into variants, the touring version and the sporting version.
the Megola featured fuel tanks, a fuel gauge, tachometer, ammeter, and a hand-controlled butterfly valve to regulate the throttle. This classic motorcycle was remarkably beautiful and weirdly unique. Utilizing a 640cc radial engine mounted within the front wheel's framework. Despite its flexibility, this engine lacked both a transmission and a clutch. The Megola engine delivered a modest power output of 14 bhp, applied directly to the wheel. Built by George's Roy from 1928 to 1934, the Majestic is considered one of those revolutionary and unusual vehicles that left a significant mark on the automotive industry. The Majestic transformed motorcycle mass production for decades. The bike featured a pressed steel structure that resembled car design more than, or should I say, normal motorcycles. This innovative framework supported many components within a single unit. Roy's design eliminated complex welding by riveting steel panels together into a monocoque chassis, which served as both the bodywork and frame. The steel panels formed a semicircular spar arrangement connecting the steering head directly to the bike's rigid rear axle and enclosing the rear wheel in a streamlined steel fender. Quasar is a semi-enclosed motorcycle that adopted the feet-forward concept. This strange design changed the rider's position to sitting inside and down, rather than the traditional straddling position. The Quasar features a cabin with a roof, a laminated glass windscreen, car-style wipers, and a heater. It is also weirdly unique for repurposing the engine from the three-wheel Reliant Robin car. The 850cc four-cylinder inline engine allowed the Quasar to cruise at 90 to 100 miles per hour, with the capability to exceed this limit under favorable conditions. The 150 TAP was a customized anti-tank scooter designed specifically for French paratroopers. Atelier's de construction de motorcycles at automobiles launched the initial model, the 150 TAP, in 1956, later enhancing it with a reinforced frame and a 3-inch M2075 mm recoilless rifle. Typically, the scooters were parachute dropped in pairs with a two-person team. One scooter carried the gun and an M1917 Browning machine gun tripod while the other was loaded with ammunition. The 150 TAP featured a 150cc two-stroke engine, reaching a top speed of 37 miles per hour. Vespa manufactured only 600 units between 1956 and 1959. The Harfordshire Superbike Center in the UK constructed the remarkable 48-cylinder Tinker toy motorcycle. This extraordinary bike is powered by 16 Kawasaki two-stroke three-cylinder KH to 5 engines, arranged in six groups of eight. With a total capacity of 4,200 cc, the engine uses a 125 cc single-cylinder two-stroke donkey engine as a starter motor, instead of a traditional electronic starter. The Tinker Toy is equipped with a BMW K100 gearbox, a fuse box, six carburetors, an electric fuel pump, and three ignition units. Astonishingly, this motorcycle is road legal and holds the Guinness World Record for having the most cylinders in a vehicle engine.
That's that for today, folks. Join us later again for another group of weirdest and most innovative motorcycles we have ever seen. <laughs>